my name is Greg Robinson, and this is Robinson Horsemanship. Greg, uh, Greg what is your greatest accomplishment um, in your journey as a horseman? Well, I'll tell you this, it's got nothing to do with anything I did in the show pen. Um, the learning that I've done outside of the show pen is what's changed everything for me. Uh, a lot of times not even within the confines of an arena, you know, out in the sage. Um, which brings up a kind of a sore spot for me. Um, Tom and Bill Dorrance weren't chasing points and career earnings and winning buckles, yet they changed the horse world for everyone. If you're making your living horseback, those men affected your life, whether you know their name or not. Um, they made that big of an impact uh, worldwide. Um, and it had nothing to do with showing horses. Um, unfortunately, the mindset is, well, what have they won? There's some mighty handy folks out there that ain't never seen a show pen and never will. And they are insane good horsemen and horsewomen. And, uh, you know, for years building my clinic business, because I do get my greatest joy out of doing clinics, I'd rather do that than, than just about anything horseback other than Brandon Cabs. Um, but somebody will reach out to me and say hey we'd love to have you come to north carolina and do a clinic great i'd love to come so when they go to advertising that i'm coming first question people ask what's he want and it's all based on that so that uh that bothers me a bit and uh, i understand the whys but how much value is on that title, really? Um, I've won, I think, seven world championships and I think eight or nine reserve world championships in ranch versatility, whether it's the cow work, the reining, ranch riding, um, ultimate ranch horse. And, and I'm proud of those accomplishments. I worked hard to get them. And I don't discredit people for going and showing and achieving. I think that's a great thing. But I, horsemanship's so much bigger than that. It's way bigger than, than career earnings and, and titles. But titles matter. Um, I've told my kids for years, I just gotta win a world title doesn't matter what in, I just got to put those two words before my name and then people will take me serious. And it was amazing how many people reached out for clinics basically the day I put on that buckle. <laughs> and I'm not a bit handier the day I put it on than the day before I won it. And, uh, and that's... That's one of the, the problems, I think, with the industry. People get kind of tunnel vision on who gets credit for what as far as, like I said earlier, just because you're a great team roper doesn't necessarily make you a great horseman. And liken it to the reigning industry. Um, matter of fact, uh, really top end reiner. Um, Patrice St. Ange, I was riding with him, great guy, I really like him. I was riding him with him one day and he said, I can't do what you do. He said, I know reining, that's all I know. I cannot do anything else horseback. And, and I was proud of him for speaking up and saying that just straight up. He said, I can't do what you do. He said, the reason I'm better at this is because it's all I do, it's all I know. And, and I admire what he does in the show pen. He's a good hand, and I know several others that way. But you get them outside of that pen, things change. And so my greatest accomplishment, matter of fact, my great friend Dwight Hill, who is a handy son of a gun, um, we were talking. This had to have been probably 25 years ago. And, and he said, what do you want, man? What's your goal? I just want to be handy. And it doesn't matter if I'm 
in a rodeo arena roping bulls and dragging them out. Brandon Trap, show pen, clinic, in the round pen with a colt. I just want to be handy. And it, it's a lifelong journey, I can promise you that. It don't happen overnight. And uh, I still strive. My, my greatest fear for me personally is becoming stagnant. I don't ever want to be stagnant. I don't ever want to stop the journey. I don't ever want to get to a point where I think I know it all because then I become useless. Not only useless to the people who come to ride with me, but more importantly, useless to the horses I ride. I've got to get better. And, um, and that's the greatest part of this journey is there's always another step. There's always another step. You can make it softer, you can make it cleaner, you can make it better. How do you do it? And that's when I started really changing my program as far as a rider. Um, I knew what, what the rules were, what the trainers said and, and the experts said. And, and, it, and it sounds, I don't even like saying the words because it sounds boastful, but I got to a place in my riding that I was struggling finding someone that I really bad wanted to go ride and learn from because I either already knew what they do or I didn't really like what they do. Um, so it, it was a struggle for me and that's, but it was a great awakening to me because then I started saying, what about the horse? That's who it matters to the most. What do you say about it? And that's when I started discovering that horses have been doing some really great things for us in spite of how truly crappy we ride them. And that's when I started changing what I do with my hands, like in turns, and where I look, and how I create a nice soft headset, and um, how I guide my horses, how I stop my horses. So many things changed when I started studying the mechanics of the horse. How does this animal move when I'm not up here screwing up his life? What do they do naturally? Now, how can I help them because I'm not a natural horseman, because I don't believe horsemanship is natural whatsoever. But how do I get these horses to be soft, willing, and balanced with the least amount of pressure from me? And that really changed everything. Um, I, I go against the grain quite a bit when it comes to horsemanship, but if people will give me about 10 minutes of time, I can prove, prove the difference. And I'm, I'm not here to say I'm better than anybody else. I just do it a little differently and it, work, you know, and it works for me. And it doesn't matter the discipline or the breed. Um, I don't care what breed of horse you're riding, what event you do or don't do, or what kind of pants you're wearing when you do it. It works. And, uh, and it's simple. And I think that's my greatest accomplishment was when the light, the, the clouds parted and I realized, man, I've been making this way too hard. This is too hard. This stuff is simple. Great performance on a horse is stupid simple. And I've been taught, I've been programmed to make it hard for them and for me. So. And the thing that I'm proud, most proud of was that, was just that, and I didn't discover this without the horse. It was the horse that did it for me when I started changing the way I thought, not think like a trainer, think like a horseman. And what does it matter to you, the horse? And changed everything about how I ride, how I train and how I teach. Um, that one, that one puts a smile on my face. And it, it's not a buckle. Even though I do like winning buckles. When I go to town, I dang sure want to win them. <laughs> but but uh, 
I'm never going to make it cost my horse anything. Um, if we win, I want my horse to be happy about it. Um, I say it all the time. Trainers want reaction. They set something up, that horse doesn't react. They're going to get tougher on them until they do. I don't think that's good horsemanship. A horseman wants thought that leads to it. I want to create thinkers, not stinkers. And if I'm hurrying and I'm rushing and I'm impatient and I get tougher and tougher and tougher to get a horse to react to what I'm doing, that is not good teaching. I will be patient. I'll wait it out. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get you to do what I want. But I don't have to get tougher on you to do it. And that gets a horse wanting to do their job. I want them to perform for me because they want to and they enjoy it, not because they're terrified not to. And unfortunately, that's pretty prevalent in the performance horse industry. Not all, but there's a lot of horses out there that I got to look at them and say, does that horse really love his job? Probably not. So I try to do less and get more. And uh, I, think, I think the results of that for my horses and for people at my clinics, you know, they get to trying too hard. I said, you know what, just put your hand down, trust him. Ask a little softer, things go well.